Okay, today we're going to look at these Mongoose Synthetic Rounds. So they are a round brush. The hairs are Mongoose Synthetic. When you receive your brushes, they have a cap on the top. Let me zoom in so you can see that better. So it's a clear plastic cap. This is a protective cap for shipping purposes only. When you remove that, you need to discard it or use it for something else. Don't try to put it back on because if you do that, you're liable to get one of the hairs um, that you're going to get caught and it's going to be sticking out. Okay, so it's a good idea not to do that. So these brushes range all the way from a 20 aught up to a size 14. So when you get below the zero, for instance, this one is a 3 aught. Let's zoom in. I think I can get it a little bit closer. So we've got a 3 aught. Okay. Let's look at them this way. So the aught or the zero, okay. Then you've got a 3 and a slash over zero. So that means 3 aught is what that stands for. So it's going down in size. The next one is a 5 aught. The next one is a 10 and then a 20. So what that means is the higher the number that's above the uh, slash, the smaller as far as the brush size. Whereas your traditional, uh, when you go above zero, the larger the number, so this is a size 1. Let's get these down here where you can see them. So you've got a size 1 all the way up to a size 14. So that's how large the round part of the brush is. Okay, so when you're going up, it the number goes up and the size gets larger. When you go below the zero, the number on the top is the size and it gets smaller. So it reverses. Okay, so just a little education. So throw those little caps away or use them for something else. Do not try to put them back on. They are for shipping purposes only. Okay, the first thing that you need to do with any brush, uh, whether it is new or if it's one that you've used before, these have a sizing in them, which means that keeps them kind of stiff and in place for shipping. I'm going to back the camera back off. Okay, and you need to swish it in the water and just kind of get those hairs damp and work the sizing out of the brush. Okay, and you can work it in the palm of your hand, but basically that sizing is in there for shipping purposes. So it's stiff. Don't take your brush and like fan the hairs back because you're, you could break an actual bristle. Okay, so always swish it in water, condition it with water before you start anything. Okay, all right, so I'm going to move that out of the way. So I'm going to just pick out a couple of different sizes just so that you can see uh, the difference. And maybe we'll go with a larger one. So what I've got here is a size 8. I've got a size 6 a size 4, and a size 0. All right. All right, so I'm going to turn on my uh, palette cam so that you can see how I'm loading the brush also up there in the corner. Okay, so these are the ones I'm going to use. And then I've got just a artist tablet here. This is just a, a sketch pad. You can use uh, different canvas paper. It depends on what you're doing, okay? So let's start with um, what I'm using today to demonstrate is just folk art uh, by Plaid multi-surface color. This particular color is perfect purple. So I'm going to put some of that out. And then I'm also going to put some white. This is wicker white. And depending on the surface you're working on, 
uh, with acrylics I'm going to use I'm going to put a little floating medium out sometimes the paper is dry and this will help me actually uh, allow the flow of the stroke okay so I'm going to swish all of those brushes in water to get that sizing out and then I'm just going to touch them to a towel here to make sure I've got all that out all right, so let's start with the larger brush. And let's just do uh, some pressure strokes and comma strokes. So always wet your brush, blot it on the paper towel to make sure all that uh, moisture is out. Also double check to make sure that you don't have any drops of water on the ferrule of the brush that could run down in and then transfer to your piece. So let's fully load and you can see on the palette cam I'm working that color into the brush. Think of it as shampooing your hair. Really get that coated and loaded. Don't just roll it and just coat just the outside of the hairs. You need, the, it'll, when you load it like this, you're going to carry it further with your stroke. It's going to last longer. And then I'm just going to tip just to give us um, a variation into the white. Okay, so let's start with just doing uh, a pressure stroke. So hold the brush upright, but slightly cocked back. So if you were looking at it, so this would be straight up. So I'm just going to slightly tilt it back. Okay, and apply pressure. The more pressure you apply, the larger the stroke is. Pull, pull, slightly turn between your thumb and first finger to get to a point. So what I'm doing is just slightly turning like this, just ever so slightly. Reload. Okay. So press, pull, lift, 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 and come off to a point. All right. Okay. So again, fully load. So work that color into the brush. And you can even, and then I like to get that point back on the brush, okay? You can side load around by just dragging it through one side. You can see it there, okay? Or you can tip. Tip meaning touch the very tip of the brush into the color. And again, I'm at a slight angle. You can see that this is coming back of my hand. It's not straight up and down, but it's leaned back slightly. The more a brush stroke is made up of color, we've got two different colors on the brush, the amount of pressure you put down, and the motion. The motion is we're going to pull this one straight. Okay, so press down. The more pressure determines the size. Press, press, pull, pull, lift, lift, and lift to a point. Now what I'm going to do is turn my tablet sideways so you can see more of the pressure. Okay, so press, pull, pull, start to lift and I'm slightly turning between my finger and my thumb just to get that tail on the end. Okay, so let's do it again. So press, pull, lift, 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 lift. Now it's starting to drag on this paper, so I'm going to dip into a little bit of that floating medium and just work it in to the color. Let's do it again from the side view. So I'm, I'm not standing straight up. I'm slightly leaning the brush back. Press, pull, pull, lift, 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 lift as I turn and get it to a point. Okay. Fully load. I think what I'm going to do is turn the palette cam over to where you can see my strokes and see if that will help. All right. Ready? Press, pull, lift, 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 and to a point. A little bit more of that floating medium into the color so that I don't get this jagged end. Okay. 
and I like to study myself with my pinky. Okay, ready and press, pull, lift, 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 and to a point. Press, pull, lift, to a point. Now remember, this is the size eight round. So remember, color, pressure, and motion. We've got our product, our color on there, the amount of pressure determines the size. So that one I did shorter. So if you just press down, lift straight back up, and come off to a point. So press, pull, and lift. And you can turn to the right or to the left. It doesn't matter. But what that does, and if you have a good brush and you take care of it, it will spring back and it will come to a point when you come off of it. You just need to make sure that you remember that you need to start lifting. Before. So if you want, um, get a pencil here. So if you know that you want this size of a stroke, okay, depending on the size brush that you have, press, you can see I'm already halfway filled that in. I need to start lifting, lifting, pull, pull, pull to a point. Okay. Constantly reloading. Press, pull, lift, lift, slightly turn and come to a point. Let's do that again. So press to get the shape, the size, pull, 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 and you can keep pulling as long as you want and then you can come off on a tail. So it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So press, pull, and lift to a point. Press, pull, and lift to a point. I think you can see that, okay. All right. Press, pull, lift, 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 and come off to a point. Now, that's just a pressure stroke. Um, you can also do one where you've got that nice point and you just sit down and lift up and you've got, it's like a reverse of it. Press and lift up. It's almost like a little teardrop. But you gotta have a point to start with. So I'm just kind of touching, press, and lift up. It's harder to do with a large brush. It's much easier with a smaller brush. So sit and lift straight up. So there's no motion. The motion on this one is just pressing down. Let's do one up here so you can see it a little bit closer. Okay, so you got to be mindful of what's on your brush. Okay, so just touch the tip, sit it down, lift it straight up. So you've got a point, press and lift straight up. So the motion is pressing on this particular one. Remember, color, pressure, and motion. Color, pressure, and motion is a brush stroke. Press and lift up. Okay, so let's turn this around. And let's do some uh, what we call comma strokes. So you're going to basically create a comma. Okay. So now I'm going to press, pull, lift, and this time I'm turning it to the side. Still doing the same motion. Color, the amount of pressure determines the size. The motion this time is me turning the brush. So press, pull, pull, lift, lift, and come off. Press, 
pull, lift, lift, and come off to a point. So let's come back up here, press, pull, lift, and come off to a point. You can't, if you go too fast, you're, you're going to get a really terrible tail. You get real straight, okay? So you have to allow all the hairs to come back together in that motion. Okay, so we're going to press, pull, lift to a point. And I think you can see it on the palette, the smaller uh, screen, the motion and how much pressure. So watch the amount of pressure that I'm putting down this time. Press. So I'm halfway down on the bristles. Pull. I'm starting to lift, 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 and pull to a tail. Let's tip into white this time. Okay, so press, pull, lift, 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 and curve. So I'm curving. That's my motion. The straight ones, I was just pulling it straight. So I'm adding some of the floating medium because the paper is dry. Okay. All right. So now let's curve some the other direction now. So press, pull, lift, start to curve, 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 and come off to the tail. Press, pull, lift, and come off. Press, pull, lift, 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 and come off. Think of it as what I like to tell my students is the airplane doesn't go to the end of the runway and just stand straight up. So don't jerk your brush off of the paper or whatever your surface is. You need to let it glide and come off gently. Okay. So press, pull, pull, lift, 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 lift to a tail. That slow motion, stop and think about it and you will get that nice tail. You can nestle these um, strokes against each other and create different uh, leaves. See that? Press, pull, and lift. Okay, another thing that you can do with the round is we can do, the, we did the commas both way, we did the straight, now we're going to do a double pointed pressure stroke. To that, you need to have a nice point on the brush, and you're going to stand straight up and pull for a straight line, then apply pressure, and now lift, 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 and get that nice tail. Now I didn't have enough of the floating medium in my brush, so I didn't get a good tail on that. So I want to pull, press, lift back up, come together, and come off to a point. Say, Pull, press, lift, 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 and come off to a tail. Press and lift. So you're just having a point on both ends. So this is good if you're doing, um, say you want to start out and almost do like a, a ribbon type stroke. So you can get points, points, and then pressure. So the motion is, and the pressure determines the size of the stroke. Okay, I'm going to rinse this one and I'm going to go to a smaller round. So you can see that you can do different size strokes with the same brush. I'm swishing my brush into the water to clean it. And then what you want to do is have a piece of paper towel and you want to blot your brush and if you see color come out of the brush on the paper towel then you need to rinse it again okay so that's going to tell you that you're clean okay so i'm going to do um, the pressure strokes 
press, pull, lift, 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 slightly turn and come to a point. So I'm slightly turning between that first finger and thumb and all that does is gather all those hairs back up to a point. Press, pull, lift, lift, lift and slightly turn. So just a straight pressure stroke. Do a few more of those. So a lot of these put together can make different things. Okay, so let's do to the right. Press, pull, lift, lift, lift. Okay, press, pull, lift, lift, lift. And then let's go the other direction. Okay, now what I'm going to do is show you, you can go a large stroke, let's go a little bit smaller, slightly smaller, just not as much pressure, not as long, slightly smaller, so I haven't changed brushes, I'm just small amount of pressure. to get those little strokes. Okay, number four. So the more product you have on it, the larger you're gonna be able to make the stroke. More pressure, more length, and then if you don't apply as much pressure, you can do smaller strokes. Okay. All right, um, so with that little pressure stroke that I was showing you, where you can just start with a point and press and lift, you do have to make sure that brush is uh, loaded generously to do the little pressure stroke so that you don't get that little point. Okay, so let's say we wanted to do a flower out of these. Okay, so my rule of thumb is when you're making a flower, if you think of the size of the flower, okay, the center is going to be here. So now you have a donut. If you create a Y, now you have two large sections and a small section. If you divide that large section in half, now you have five equal sections. You can either do one big petal or you can just do a petal right exactly where your lines are. You can also divide it again and do one in between. But let's just work on just the simple flower. Okay, so I'm going to use my point and then press and lift straight up. I'm going to turn because I always, my rule of thumb is to bring my strokes towards me. Now, in, even though we're not dragging the brush, I'm still working towards myself. Point, press, and lift straight up. Turn. Press and lift straight up. Press and lift straight up. P 
press and lift straight up. So you have a flower. Now you can make a leaf on that. Let's Okay, did you see I had a little bit of purple still in my brush, so I swished it again in the water and then just blotted it on there. Paper towel so I could see. All right, so now I'm going to grab um, a green color. That is citrus green, and once again, I'm using... Um, multi-surface colors. And I'm going to grab a teal just because I have it here. Also going to put out a little bit more of the floating medium. Okay, so I'm going to load same brush, the number four, in the citrus. Sorry, you couldn't see that. Load in the citrus, and I'm going to work a little bit of the floating medium, and then I'm just going to tip into that teal color. So now I want to come out from the flower to make a leaf, so I'm just going to press, pull, and lift. So if I wanted like three little leaves, okay, so it can be done. You can make um, larger leaves by just nestling one stroke here, add another, and I'm reloading each time so that I can get that variegation of color then you can come over to this side and scoop those, nestle them in together. I'm going to brush over that one again. Don't forget to curve pressure. Amount of pressure determines how large the stroke is. Color, pressure, and motion. And then one stroke at the tip. And then you can pull a, um, with a liner brush, I'll just pull one here with this for a center vein. Okay? So you see how you can use the same brush to do multiple things. Um, if you wanted to do a different type of a flower, more, let's say like a uh, chrysanthemum, uh, let's do, we'll stick with the purple, a little bit of white, grab some floating medium. So if here is your stem, press, pull, and lift. Make these different links. There's that straight one. Remember, we started with that. Curve these all in towards each other. They're all growing from that point, from the stem. Let's see, yeah, that one I lost my color because I needed a little bit more of the floating medium on my brush. Being acrylics, we can just stroke right over that. And let's make a shorter one. I'm sure and grab, get that white on there. Maybe put one right here on top. And maybe one right there. Um, you could have some that were falling 
down, so turn your surface and maybe grab a couple from that direction and one from the other direction. Okay. So hopefully that helps show you how you can create different things using a round brush. And of course, if you were going to put your stem, so we would need like a little ball and your stem. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining me today. And I look forward to showing you some other strokes.